Hey there, everybody. Anna here. How are you? I hope all is well. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm live and you guys can see me because typically technology. <laughs> so I'm hoping I'm live. Want to just make sure you hear me. Everybody? Yeah. Anna? Okay. Looks like we're good to go. Hi, everybody. How are you? Anna here. Uh, good to see you guys. I am just going to give everybody a minute to kind of hop in. Um, please comment below. Tell me where you're, where you're calling in from, where you guys live. I can't wait to share. I'm going to be sharing some tips and strategies for at home learning that you are all dealing with right now. Hopefully you won't have to deal with it much longer, but who knows uh, if that's actually going to be the case or not. So um, I just wanted to come on. I wanted to kind of give you an update what's going on. I want to give you some really exciting news that I'm announcing today. And of course, I really want to give you some um, information. I really wanted to provide you with some tips and strategies today for at-home learning that can help you. So, hey there. Hi, Chris. Hi, Carolyn. So good to see you. Thank you for commenting. I really appreciate that. Hi, Tracy. How are you? Thank you. I, hi, love for all. You're so sweet. Thank you. Hi, Christine. So good to see you guys. And thank you so much for popping in. It really makes uh, my day that you're popping in. I'm excited to tell you a few things today. Number one, we're going to talk about three tips and strategies to really help you with your at-home learning instruction that you're doing right now. And I'm going to be sharing some really exciting news uh, for parents that are home instructing their children and just kind of give you an update with uh, where I am. So good to see you guys. Yes, I am feeling better. Thank goodness. Um, thank you so much for your care, concern, your messages. Oh my goodness. I received so many Facebook messages and I'm just so um, just honored and just grateful to have you all in my community and it means so much. So thankfully I absolutely am feeling better and, uh, I'm thank goodness, you know, um, just to kind of give you guys an update. So I know many of you are watching, um, my, my lives that I was doing read with Anna. Uh, unfortunately I stopped because I was not feeling well at all. And, um, unfortunately today, really over this weekend, I made the very, very difficult decision to um, not go live every day teaching uh, live. While I loved every moment of it, it was a very difficult thing for me to continue to do for a number of reasons. Number one, I don't know if you all know, but I live in New York. If you can't tell from the accent, we are right outside of the city. Uh, we live in the suburb right outside of New York City. So we are very, very close to New York City. And um, our county has been hit extremely, extremely hard um, with uh, COVID-19. Um, it's been an extremely trying time in New York, as you all know, as I'm sure you're going through your own trials and tribulations in your own home states. Um, but it's been really, really difficult here at New York, in New York. Uh, and as I said, we're right outside the city in our, I live in Westchester County, right outside the city. And um, my husband is a first responder. He's a firefighter, um, but primarily their fire department does EMT work. So um, he works in a pretty suburban suburban community uh, here in Westchester County. And their work is primarily EMT work. And uh, so he's going on a lot of calls um, of people that are sick, unfortunately, with COVID. And that has created some situations here at home um, that have caused a lot of anxiety for me. I'm a severe asthmatic. So him being home and being subjected to sick patients, while I'm so proud of him for what he's doing and, you know, putting his life on the line every day, you know, he comes home to myself and the boys and um, it's been very, very difficult uh, to say the least. So he is actually quarantining all the time when he's home now. So when he's not at the firehouse, he comes home, he quarantines up in our bedroom because there's a full bath in there. And then we bring him up breakfast, lunch, and dinner when he's not working. Uh, and then when he's working, he's at the, he's at the firehouse for 24 hours. So, um, so it's been, it's been tough. You know, we're, I'm also granted my children are older, so I'm not teaching like most of you at home. So, oh goodness, I pray for all of you every day because I don't know how those of you are doing it with young children at home, teaching them, cooking three meals a day, the cleaning, trying to still make a living or look for a new job. I, I can't even fathom everything that's going on in everybody's lives. So um, I just wanted to kind of give you an update as to what's going on, why I'm not teaching live today. And I'm also trying to keep my own business afloat because as you know, uh, I provide uh, curriculum resources for school districts and teachers. And now that schools are out, there's just, it's just, 
<laughs> you know, it's a snowball effect. You know, things are tough. And I have employees that, that you know, um, work for me. And they need their salary to pay for their lives and their food and their rent and their mortgage. So me having to work is really important because it keeps them working. And, you know, it's part of the economy, like we're all struggling with right now. So um, there was just a lot on my plate. There was a lot that I've been dealing with. I wasn't feeling well. My anxiety was through the roof. Dealing with cooking three meals a day. Not that I have to take care of my boys because they're older, but, you know, God forbid they cook, right? <laughs> um, and then just dealing with the anxiety of my husband going back and forth to work and, um, you know, going on calls with patients that are very, very sick. So it's been a lot to say the least, but um, I wanted to let you know what I've got going on, what's happening, what I'm launching, and I'm going to be giving you some tips today for uh, how to help you with your at-home learning. So I have had a lot of parents following me recently um, because I was doing that live teaching, and I know that you're really struggling right now. You're struggling with so many things, just like so many of us are. And I wanted to just provide you just some quick tips to help you with at-home instruction because honestly, I think many parents are putting so much on themselves and and teachers are just so overwhelmed too because they're trying to figure out this online learning platform, trying to figure out how they're going to meet the needs of all of their students via virtual learning. And they're just, they're struggling if so much as well. So they want what's best for their own students, but yet they're in the confines of this computer to, to reach their kids and not be one-on-one -on -one with them and not be able to interact with them. So their teachers are having their own struggles, trying to figure out how to make sure that your children are, you know, ch children keep learning, you know? So there's just, everyone's just going through so much. And so today what I want to do is I want to provide you with three tips for at-home learning that I, I really hope that you will really reflect on and think about and put into practice because I do believe it will help you. And then we're going to talk about guided readers for your at-home reading instruction because here's the deal, my friends. I don't know about your state, but I highly doubt in New York we are going to be going, to back, going back to school this year. Um, I know our, I was actually just watching our governor, uh, Governor Cuomo, live with our surrounding states. He was on with Connecticut and New Jersey and Rhode Island and Delaware and Pennsylvania, all of our surrounding uh, states. And they're all trying to kind of come up with a plan together on how to reopen the economy and, of course, school systems as well. So, you know, it's clearly a collaborative effort, which I am so you know, thankful about that they're doing this and really thinking it through um, how they're going to open the economy back up and school systems because it needs to be done safely, you know, for our kids and just for everybody. So with that being said, let me quickly tell you about three tips I have for you for at home teaching and learning, because I know that now the teaching has been put into your hands. And I know teachers are probably providing you with activities and Seesaw and Google Classroom and and you're probably trying to navigate all of that. So I kind of wanted to just give you three tips on how to really think about your day with your child at home. These thoughts, tips, ideas will work really well for children that are in K through fourth grade. And I really want you to reflect on them, on them and think about how you can institute these things within your family and your daily um, kind of activities. So the first tip that I wanted to share with you today for at-home instruction that you're doing with your child is set a desired learning time. So for example, what I mean by that is that a kindergartner shouldn't be doing the same work or the same amount of work or the same amount of time that they're working as a fourth grader. So I, I wanted to give you kind of like a gauge. A kindergartner should do about an hour of work per day. Now that hour is not all together. They should do them and I call them like little learning labs. They should do like 15 minute learning labs four times a day. That's plenty of instruction for your kindergartner. You want them to do a reading activity. You want them reading maybe a sentence that they're writing or a couple of sentences, depending on the ability of your child. You want them definitely doing some, some type of math work or math activities to keep up their addition and subtraction facts and their number sense facts. So really your focus should primarily be on reading and math and a little writing 
combined with the reading, combine the writing with the reading, because that's how you can make sure that they're combining those two skills. So kindergartners should, should be doing about an hour of work per day. Again, it should be in like 15 minute little learning labs. A first grader should do about an hour to an hour and a half of a day. Again, 15 to 20 minute little learning labs. So give them specific time slots throughout their day. A second grader, a second grader should do about an hour and a half to two hours, again, of learning per day. Again, this is, you have to think about your child as well, but you want to do a second grader like 20 to 25 minutes of learning labs a day. So have them do 20 minutes of learning, 20 minutes of reading. Maybe now after they finish reading the story, maybe the next learning lab is they're responding to the reading that they're doing. And they respond for 15 minutes in writing to that particular story that they're reading. And maybe the next learning lab that they participate in, which is the next 20 minutes, they do some type of math activity or math lesson or math activity that their teacher provides them with. So break up the learning time into, I call them little learning labs. So give them four different learning labs a day or five different learning labs a day. A third grader should do about two to two and a half hours of work a day. Again, you need to break this up. Don't forget, children in school are not sitting for six hours straight. There's snack time. There's break time. There's specials where they're going to music or library. They're walking around. They're going to physical education. They have lunch. They have recess. They have these built-in breaks throughout the day for children. And it's really important that they have that at home, too, because it will not only help them, but it will help your sanity as well. Because expecting a child to sit for an hour to work will never, ever work. It won't. I promise you. Expecting a child to sit for an hour, even in second grade or even in third grade, is too much to ask. And honestly, it's going to cause a battle between parents and children at home. So try to, you know, create a, a very flexible schedule. Flexible, flexible. You know, they have breakfast, do a quick learning lab for 20 minutes of reading, and then they go off and they play or they do a Lego or they draw or, you know, they go on to the computer or computers are too much lately. So maybe something else. Maybe they want to do a video game. We want to give them those really good, easy breaks between learning labs because those breaks will allow them to kind of rejuvenate their energy, let them run around, let them go outside. And it will also give you time in between. And remember, parents, these learning labs or these learning periods that they're doing at home it's not all on your shoulders. Yes, it is on your shoulders because we want you want your children to keep learning. But if you give them the right um, consistent schedule, it will start to take a, a positive effect on them. If you do an hour one day and then don't do anything for two days, or you throw them on the computer for an hour and then you don't do anything for another day, if the inconsistency or the lack of consistency creates a really, really difficult um, way for children to learn because children don't learn that way. Children learn best with consistency. And I, trust me, I know consistency is very difficult being at home right now with all of the things that are going on. You're either working from home or you're trying to work from home or you're looking for a new job from home along with cooking every meal and cleaning up and all of the other things. So it's important to make sure this little flexible schedule that you put together is easy, not only for your child, but for you. Expecting them to sit for longer, if like a kindergartner through second grade, expecting them to sit for longer than 15 to 20 minutes is going to be a battle. It's going to be very hard. So you have to really think about what you want your child to do during certain learning labs during the day and then give them that one activity to do and then say okay so why don't we take you know a 45 minute break and either here's your snack or go play it with a lego or go do a, a, a listen whatever you got to do go do a video game whatever it might be give them the break and then say okay let them know what's coming up say okay in 25 minutes or when this bell rings you're going to come back and we're going to do our second 15 minute learning lab and the, the, the more consistent you are at home with those things, 
it's important. It will help them. It will help them become consistent and start to get used to this new learning at home because they're going to be at home for a while. So, um, and I, you know, by giving your child breaks between, you can call them brain breaks because we do that in class. We give our kids brain breaks. They have snack, they have lunch, they have recess, they have gym, they have library. They're going here, they're going to assemblies. They're, they don't sit for hours at a time in class. They don't do it. So expecting them to do that at home is going to cause even more chaos because <laughs> I can only imagine what's going on because it's so difficult with the situation we're all in. So give them 15 to 20 minute learning labs and that's and say, okay, we're going to do reading for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, now go do a break for 45 minutes or an hour and come on back and let's do a math sheet or a math activity. This is quick learning. It really, it's quick urgent learning. That's it. Expecting them to learn for four hours a day is not going to happen. And it's only going to drive you crazy. So my first tip was set a desired learning time. Again, kindergarten, no more than an hour a day. And again, only in 15 minute learning labs. First grade, about an hour to an hour and a half. Second grade, an hour and a half. Third grade, maybe around two hours. Fourth grade, two hours, two and a half hours. You need to give them time in between. So that was the first thing, um, really just having specific learning times and giving them and making them learning labs and give them breaks in between. The second uh, tip is that giving them a very specific place that they do their learning. I know that sounds so simple and so like really that's a tip, it is. The more consistent they are with where they do their daily work, if it's at the kitchen table or the dining room table or the coffee table in the family room or the coffee table in the living room, wherever it is, make sure it's the same place every day. That consistency helps children feel like, okay, they get their mind into, oh, okay, I'm learning now. This is my learning time. And being consistent, I know it's not going to feel great in the beginning, but the more consistent you are with where they do their daily work, they'll, their brains get accustomed to, okay, this is work time, this is learning time. Is it easier said than done? Absolutely. Is this going to happen overnight? Absolutely not. But clearly we might all be in this for quite some time and your children may not be going back until next fall. And if that's the case, we need to ensure that our children keep learning because we don't want them regressing, the most important thing. So tip two was create a specific spot that they work at every day, wherever it may be. Don't change it up from in room to room or place in place. One place, that's their learning lab area. Call it their learning lab. So that not only they get learning lab activities, they get a learning lab area. That's it. My third, uh, my third tip and strategy is to be realistic and have realistic goals and expectations. You know, we're all stressed out. We're all overwhelmed. You've, you've, now, you've now added teacher to your resume. And it's just crazy town. You know, I, I would, what, 90% of the world doesn't homeschool their, their children. They send them to school to be, to be taught by teachers that are professionally trained. And now you've got teacher on your resume. And that is just difficult because you're doing all of the other things in addition to being a mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, nanny, babysitter, guardian, whatever it may be. So have realistic expectations. So that was my third tip. Now, my last tip is something that I feel extremely, extremely passionate about. And I want to tell you the number one most important thing your child should do absolutely every single day is read. Because without reading, without the ability to decode, to read fluently, and to understand what they read, without that ability, nothing else matters. They cannot do math if they can't read the directions. They cannot do science activities and science experiments and learn about social studies and current events if they can't read. Trust me, trust me when I tell you, I taught second grade for 23 years. And the one thing I can tell you that's most important is that those two months over the summer that those children aren't in school, if a child doesn't read for two months over the summer, they can regress up to six months in their reading progress over a two month summer. So now that our children are home and learning from home, We've got a job to do and we have to make sure that reading is of the utmost paramount importance 
while they're home. Because if it's not, if it's not, everything else is going to suffer. Every other area of their learning will suffer if they don't keep up with their reading. If they keep up with their reading and they keep up with understanding and learning, decoding new words and learning sight words and practicing phonics and reading books every single solitary day, you will not see a, de a decrease in their progress, in their learning progress. That I can promise you. But if they don't read every day, if they're just sitting there doing worksheets every day, you don't want that. Granted, many schools are sending home packets of work to do, and that's important. We want to keep them working. We want to keep them reading. We want to keep them lear learning. We want to keep them writing. All important. But the most important thing you can do for your child is reading. 1,000%. It was something I always really, really told my parents about when we had parent-teacher conferences was that reading is the most important thing you could do for your child. And 90% of the time, a parent would say to me in teach, parent-teacher conferences, but I don't know the questions to ask. I don't know if I'm teaching the right thing or the wrong thing. I don't know if this is the right book or the wrong book, or if it's the right level or the wrong level. They always got caught up in those things. And I want to tell you, don't get caught up in those the, the minutia of it. It's messy. It's chaos. Don't get caught up in it. I want you to know that your children should be reading. And with reading, they will progress. And as they progress, other areas of their learning will go along with it. That I can promise you. So the most important thing I want you to do is please keep your child reading. The most important thing. So I wanted to come on and share these tips with all of you today and explain to you how you should kind of try and handle this at-home learning that we're all finding ourselves in. I, you know, my children are older. I'm lucky I don't have to sit there and teach them every day. You know, I, I, I can't even fathom what it's like having to work every day and keep my business afloat and then also having to teach my children if they were in first, second, or third grade. I, 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 I bow down to you along with cooking three meals a day and then cleaning up the kitchen every five minutes because we're always in the kitchen. So I I want you to really focus on number three, which, which was be realistic with your goals and expectations because there's only so much one person can do. So have realistic goals and expectations. Give your child brain breaks, brain breaks between their learning. Remember, I call them those learning labs. Give them breaks between learning labs. Expect them only to sit for 15 to 20 minutes at a time. Don't expect longer than that because it will be a fight. You'll lock horns, I promise. So give yourself a break. They get a break. You get a break. You go do what you need to do. Go do the laundry or make a meal or go back to work and do what, what you have to do to, to keep working. But trust me, be, a real, be realistic with your goals. Now, I'm excited to tell you about guided readers today because I know many of you know that I was a teacher for 23 years. And over the last nine years, I've been supporting, supporting teachers with my curriculum resources and my professional development to help them improve their craft in the classroom and to really make sure and ensure that they're reaching the needs of their students. So that's something I've really focused on the last nine years of my business was because education is the most important thing in my life. Teaching children, helping teachers, because learning is of the utmost importance. So I created Guided Readers, which is a reading program that teachers are using in their classrooms and they're instructing their children and their students how to read. And I know that now that you're home with your children and you are in charge of their learning, you might find yourself at a loss, like what am I supposed to do now? So I'm so excited to share with you that I launched Guided Readers for Parents. I'm so excited about it because what it does is it allows you to get as involved as you want or not involved at all. And really that was the goal when I thought about how to make Guided Readers um, accessible to parents. I said, you know, these parents are struggling at home with figuring out how to do all the things. And I didn't want this to be one of them. So Guided Readers now was providing you with everything you need so that your children can so 
easily work independently on their reading every day. So I'm so excited. I created inside of the parent, the parent portal for guided readers, I created this calendar. I created one for kindergarten. I created two for first grade because as you know, our first our, our children are on different levels in reading. I created two for second grade and I created one for third grade. And this gives you six weeks of instruction, reading instruction to do at home with your child. And these are inside of guided readers in the parent portal, because now we have a parent portal. And I'm so excited to share it with you. So let me just quickly show you my screen. This is what guided readers looks like. Now, what you will do is very easily you want to go when you join you want to go to student manager and you want to add in your child's name so i'll put in my son's name right now because you know he's not a child a little anymore but if he were and you just give your child <clears throat> a two picture password super easy now you're probably looking over you're going oh boy what are the levels here what are the levels here so what i want to explain is that these levels will help you figure out and get the right books for your child. Now, let me explain. When teachers are in class and they're instructing their children, they instruct them at a certain reading level. And that's done based on different assessments that teachers use in the classroom. Now, you probably don't know what level your child is reading on. Maybe your teacher, maybe your child's teacher shared that with you. And if not, that's okay too. So I'm gonna explain these levels and do a real overall general explanation about the levels and how they can help you. For example, let me just take a sip. For example, if your child is in kindergarten, they're reading on around a level A through D. That's where a typical kindergartner is reading. Typical. Now, if a kindergartner is above grade level, they're probably reading on about a level D through about a level G if they're in advance. Of course, they could be higher than that. But you know if your child is an average reader or you know your child if your child is struggling or you know if your child is gifted in reading and they can read on a fourth grade level in kindergarten. I just I just warn you a little bit, a little cautious there. Not sometimes children, while they can read very, very well and they're excellent at decoding, sometimes their comprehension isn't always there. So I just, I just, I'm, I'm just asking you to be a little bit cautious with when you're assigning levels to your children because even though a child can read very well, sometimes they lack in the comprehension area. <laughs> And we don't want that for children. So I just wanted you to know a typical first grader, a typical first grader is reading on a level D through about a level H or I. Typically, first graders are expected to leave first grade at around a level H I. That's where first graders are typically expected to graduate out of first grade reading on that level. Can they be above grade level? Absolutely. But typically, that's where a first grader is reading. A second grader comes into second grade. Typically, we want we expect them to come in reading around a level HI, and they can be reading all the way to like an, a level M, maybe even a, maybe even an N at the end of second grade. A third grader typically comes into third grade at a, reading at around a level M N up to about a level Q. That's where the levels range for children in kindergarten through third grade. So what I want you to do is if you have a kindergartner at home, let's say my son was in kindergarten, I'm going to give him A, B, C, D, E, maybe even F readers because those younger readers are super easy to read. Or maybe if he was in second grade and he was a typical second grade reader, I might give him levels I, J, K, L, M, and N because a typical second grader, second grader will go through those levels. That's typically where a second grader would be. So I'll give my second grader those levels. And then I just create my student. And then when your child goes into the bookshelf, they'll see the activities and they'll see the books that are on their level. We want them reading on their level so they can continue to progress up the reading levels. If we give them books that are too difficult and the skills that go with it, it won't be their reading and their skills won't be scaffolded. We want to scaffold their skills. So I don't want to give my child activities that are too difficult because they need to go back down to where they are, their level, where they're currently working at, and then move them up 
and progress them higher. So let me show you exactly what you'll get as a parent and what you can see for the child. So if you want to get involved as a parent, you click parent guide only if you want to be involved. If you don't want to be involved in their reading and their learning, you don't have to be. But we provided a parent guide for you just in case you want to help your child through the learning or you want a little bit more guidance on how to progress through the lesson. So that's the first thing we provide for every book. The second thing we provide for every book is a Google Classroom activity. Now, these are the digital activities that your child will do every single day. And what's great is they can do a new book every single day. And that's what you want. If your child is reading and working on sight words, decoding, phonics, fluency, and comprehension every day, let me tell you right now, they're going to go back to school or progressing. That I can assure you. But if they don't work on sight words, phonics, decoding, and comprehension, and I'm going to add in writing to that piece. I'm going to add in a little bit of writing to that piece because we want to make sure they keep up with their writing. If they do these things every single day, they will go back to school reading exactly where they should be. And that I can promise you. So inside of the Google Slides, we have teacher-led directions. So on the first slide, they're going to work on sight words. We want our students to learn sight words. Sight words are the ability for students to look at a word and automatically know that word by looking at it. That's why we call them sight words, because they look at it and they know what it is. It's not about sounding them out. It's not about decoding it. Do you know if sight words, so sight words, if children learn the first 100 basic sight words, they can read up to 75% of the books that they have put in front of them. That's what I'm talking about here. Sight words are important. They're just as important as the reading, the phonics, and the comprehension. These are gears that work together in the reading process. Reading by itself, while it is, is so important, and just to enjoy reading, we want them to do that. It, this is part of the gears. Every gear runs into each other. So working on sight words, now, this is a lower level book. So what they're going to be doing here is they're going to be sorting words by medial sounds. This one was medial vowel sounds. So this was a lower level book. I think this was level uh, C. So this was a level C book. This is a typical kindergarten book. So here they're sorting pictures based on medial vowel sounds. Then there's teacher directions, again, that's leading each part of the lesson. So here they're work working on sight words. Here they're work working on phonic sounds. Make it, they're going to be making words with different sounds in it and different combinations of letters so they can understand that if they know how to spell spot, they know how to spell stop and top and uh clop and all the other words. The whole concept is that once a child knows how to spell one word, if they understand that they can build upon those words to make new words, as they're reading, it becomes easier. They become fluent readers. That's what all of these little pieces in the gears help them to do. If they, un if they know their sight words and they understand phonics and how words and sounds go together, they'll become better readers. And then after that, there's text-dependent questions. This is where the writing comes in. So this is where the child will click in and write an answer to the stories that they're reading. So these are the text-dependent questions your child will work on that you can also be involved in if you want to. If not, remember the teacher directions are there for your children. So yeah, here's just an example, the teacher directions. For words that have the middle vowel sound. Of so as you can see, we provide teacher-led directions for every activity they need to do. These are the activities your child would be doing in school with their with their teacher. Now let me show you what it looks like from the child's perspective. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to log in as John, my child. And remember, I uh, I set up my account, and there's John. So John, I gave him these two these two uh, passwords, super easy. So even for your littlest learners, even for your littlest of learners, you could see all the books that are available on his bookshelf. 
So what you're going to do is when you when your child looks at the book, they can look and read the book. So this opens up. Let me show you full screen so you can see. This is the digital reader. So your child can listen. Cyril's picnic plan. So this is the way the children will read the story. As you could see, they can turn the pages and listen. Not only can they listen to the story, but they can record themselves reading. So if I go back and I pick, let's pick, uh, maybe I pick Chuck's challenge. So if I pick Chuck's challenge and he wants to read, he or she wants to Chuck's read Chuck's challenge. They click play and then they can click play. Chuck could do anything. Well, almost anything. He could regroup and subtraction. He could play five chords on the guitar. As you can see, the words are highlighted on the page. What this does is that it allows your child to not only listen to the words being read aloud, but they're reading it at the same time. And it's helping them with their decoding as well and listening to fluent reading. So listening to stories as the words are highlighted helps with so many skills. Now, another thing your child can do is record themselves reading like this. Chuck could do anything. Well, almost anything. He could regroup in subtraction. He could play five chords on the guitar. So let's say make believe I finished that whole entire book, let's say. I click upload my recording and then your child can listen to their own reading like this. Chuck could do anything. Well, almost anything. He could regroup in subtraction. He could play five. So as you can see, your child can listen back to their own reading. That is an extremely important skill for children because it's helping with their fluency, their decoding, and it's also helping with comprehension. It's helping them understand the story by them rereading it and listening back. There's so many skills involved in that activity you couldn't you wouldn't even imagine not only that but they can also take an online quiz we also provide quizzes and if they need to look back at the book they could look back at the book to remind themselves what the story was about but this teaches a skill children in third and fourth grade when they're taking those state exams they're taught to look back in the text to prove their answers or to provide evidence for their answers. So teaching children to go back into the stories to answer questions is an important skill. So we provide that inside of guided readers as well. So on the child's bookshelf, they can see all the different books, fiction and nonfiction, every different area you can imagine. We also provide books on different levels. Like here you'll see Bobo the Barracuda twice and you're probably like, hey, why is it there twice? Well, that's because we provide it on multiple levels. So if your child's only reading on, let's say a level, let's say a level K, we also provide it on a level M. So we give different levels of books to children as well. But there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books to read on guided readers for your children that will ensure that they actually continue their reading progression, their reading progression, which is so, so, so important. We want to make sure that our children keep reading and keep doing the same activities they were doing in school with at home. That's what I wanted you to understand, that they need to do the same types of reading activities that they would be doing at school, at home, to ensure their progress. And it looks to me that this is going to happen probably for the rest of the school year. So the reason why I came on today was, number one, because I wanted to share some tips with you about how to really deal with this at-home instruction. But number two, I also wanted to tell you about how we changed guided readers to help you, the parent at home, ensure that you're meeting the needs of your own child. Because packets are only going to go so far. You know, meeting with your child's teacher a little bit of the day is only going to go so far. And your teachers are doing everything in their power. Trust me, I have thousands and thousands of teachers in my community that have reached out to me saying, help me. <laughs> How do I do this? What can I do? How can I meet the needs of my children? And hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of them, honestly, are using guided readers to help them. So if you can take on that reading aspect at home, 
you'll ensure that your child continues to learn and progress in their reading development, which in my opinion is the most important thing that they should be working on every single day. And Guided Readers provides you with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books. There's well over 700 books in Guided Readers, all the way from level A, which is his kindergarten, all the way to level Q, which is the end of third grade. This provides you, they can do a book every day. Could you imagine if your child reads a book every day, listens to that book, records themselves reading that book, and then does the Google Slides for that book and works on sight words, works on phonics, works on text-dependent questions for the comprehension and the writing piece? right? Don't forget your child probably works on reading and writing almost two hours a day in their classroom. A typical reading writing block is about 90 minutes in, inside of school. And your child is meeting in small groups with their teacher. They're not going to get that now. At least I don't think for most of the, for, for most homes, they're going to get that. And, and that's just it's, it's the situation that we're in because no one was expecting this. But in, to ensure that your child continues to progress in reading, they have to read every day. And guided readers can do that for you. It's all there for you. Every book you could possibly imagine on probably every topic you could imagine. And the activities to go with it, which is the most important part. They're going to continue reading, listening, recording, the, recording themselves reading and listening back. If you knew what that do, do, does for fluency, you'll be amazed. And I promise you, within weeks of using guided readers, you'll start to see a difference in your child's reading. That I can promise you. And the reason why I could make those claims is because I built guided readers from the ground up. I taught children to read for the last 23 years. 99% of my children left my classroom reading on or above grade level every single solitary year without fail. And I can say that with such, with such strength because it's true, because I know how important reading is. And if your child can read, everything else will come easier to your child. Trust me. Yes, they have to keep working on math. But if you're pulling from 75 different apps and websites and Google Classroom and this and all, it's going to be overwhelming for you and overwhelming for your child. Should they continue doing the work that your teacher assigns? Absolutely. And then go back to my tips for learning, creating those 15 to 20 minute learning labs. Do the learning lab, do the activity, do the lesson, take a break. Do the next learning lab, do the next activity, take a break. Follow those steps to ensure that your child doesn't get frustrated or angry and it creates, you know, you know, the knocking head syndromes of between parents and children. I remember when my kids were little and we would do homework together and it was like crazy town, right? So what we, what we need to do is if they can do guided readers, once you get them on guided readers, it's independent. They don't need you any longer. They don't need you sitting next to them, teaching them the lesson because we're teaching them the lesson. We are doing the lesson for you or for their teacher. And we're providing professionally leveled books through Fontas and Pinnell and Lexile. All of our books are professionally leveled and professionally illustrated by professional illustrators. Our nonfiction books all have gorgeous, captivating, beautiful photographs, which most nonfiction or expository texts have. So inside of Guided Readers, we've really provided so much in terms of continuing your child's learning. So it's open for enrollment and we're so excited about it because I wanna make sure that your child continues reading and continues learning while home and so do your, child's your children's teachers. They want the same thing and they're struggling because they're dealing with the bureaucracy uh, and the politics of schools behind them. I had a teacher email me the other day saying that they were allowed to do any kind of videos, not even recorded videos to teach their students. They weren't allowed. What? Why not? Let teachers do what they do best. Teachers are creative. Teachers are capable of things you would never even imagine they're capable of. So they're up to the task. And yet they've got this bureaucracy behind them telling them what they can and can't do and how they should and could and would reach their students. And unfortunately, we deal with inequities 
too, right? I mean, of children not having internet, not having a computer to do work on. I mean, teachers are dealing with that too. And parents at home are dealing with that too. So there's so much going on during this pandemic that we're all trying to figure out and handle. So once once I realized this was really, this was a thing and, and we might not be going back to school, we dug in, my entire team dug in and we said, let's make this easy for parents. Let's make sure a parent can put their child on guided readers and ensure that they're reading a new book every day. They can listen to the story, record themselves reading, listen back to the recording, and then follow teacher prompts to work on the phonics, the sight words, the comprehension, the text-dependent questions that lets them focus on the comprehension and really focus on those phonics skills as well. These are all the skills they would, they would be getting in class that they're now not really getting. I mean, they may be getting them depending on where your child goes to school, but I would say probably for the most part, they're not getting that. The teachers are doing the best they can, sharing different books, doing read alouds, sharing activities that your child can do at home, and they are doing the best they can with what they've got. And I applaud them from the bottom of my heart because let me tell you, if you could see the amount of emails that I've gotten over the last couple of weeks from teachers that are just want to do everything in their power to reach the needs of their kids, it's been, it's been incredible. It's been incredible from all over the globe, truly all over the globe. So my goal is to add guided readers in the mix for you and, and hopefully it can help you help your child continue on that reading process every day to ensure that they progress and not regress in their reading, which is the most important thing. So I do hope that you'll check out Guided Readers. It is up and running. It's a monthly membership and you can cancel at any time, which is great because you can use it now, use it over the summer to ensure your child continues to learn and progress. And then maybe when they start school in the fall, if you feel like it's not necessary anymore, you can cancel. So I wanted to make it super easy and super affordable for parents to jump in, make sure their child gets reading instruction every day from an from a teacher so everything on guided readers was made by me and with the help of my other teachers on my team because I've been doing it for 23 years I know what works it's the reason why all of my children left my classroom reading on above grade level on or above grade level every single year because I know how to teach them to read and that's all inside of Guided Readers. So I really do hope that you check out Guided Readers. It's like I said, it's only a monthly plan. You could cancel at any time. It's here for you. And it's super easy to put your child on it. And don't forget, I also provided these calendars to help guide you if you want to take part in the learning or the instruction with your child. This gives you a plan to follow. So if you want to help your child with reading every day and you want to help guide them through the lesson, I provided you with a calendar of the books to read, the activities you should do, and a Friday writing prompt where your kids can do writing every Friday, like a fun writing prompt to continue that that connection between the reading and the writing. The reading and writing connection is so important. So this is inside of Guided Readers waiting for you to download. Not only that, I also provide the parent guide as well, but you really won't need the parent guide inside of Guided Readers because you'll have this calendar and you'll have all of the text dependent questions inside for each book that your child reads. So it's all there for you. It's super inexpensive, super inexpensive. And again, it's a monthly plan. It's only $24.99 a month and you can cancel at any time. And you get access to over 700 titles in our library right now. And again, don't forget, you wanna make sure that you choose the right levels for your child. Remember, kindergarten is around a level A through D, an average kindergartner, A through D. An average first grader is like D through H, I. A second grader, average second grader, is between I through like about an M. And a typical third grader is around an MN through a Q. Those are the average levels that your children will be reading on throughout their school year. So a, kid, a first grader will go, a typical average first grader will come in reading on around a level D and they'll exit first grade, a typical average child 
reading on like a level H, maybe even an I. Again, if they're advanced, they're reading probably higher, maybe a K, maybe an L. So you have to just kind of figure out where your child is, and I'm here to help you as well. So you should also join my Facebook group, which is called Teaching My Child to Read, and I'm in there, and I'm going to be happy to answer questions from any parents. So I'm going to jump in really quickly and answer some questions. Hold on that you guys have been answering. Some of them have um, just Facebook user, it doesn't say your name. Hi Anna, love guided readers. It's been transforming my groups, my group time this year. So glad you're feeling better. Thank you so, so much. I am feeling better, I appreciate it. And I'm so glad it's transforming your groups this year. So great, this is great. Uh, let's see, Tracy says, thank you Anna. I signed up for guided readers last week. Can I switch to the parent account? Yes, Tracy. So basically what you can do, why don't you send us an email um, at Anna at guidedreaders.com and we'll get you set up. We'll take care of you. Don't worry about it. Just send us a quick email to Anna at guidedreaders.com and we will take care of you. Promise. Um, so it says, uh, Love for All says, do you have to purchase Parents Guided Reading, I just purchased the monthly subscription last week for teacher login. So there is a difference between the teacher plan and the parent plan. So one of the major differences is that a parent isn't necessarily a teacher and they don't know all the ins and outs of how to teach reading or how to instruct in reading. So we wanted to make it super streamlined for parents to make sure that it wasn't overwhelming for them or their child. So we created streamlined parent guides, which are very simple. And then the, and then the Google slides have the teacher led directions. The teacher portal doesn't have the audios attached to it. That's because teachers do that with their children. So the parent site has the audio teacher led directions on the Google slides and the simplistic parent guides for each book. So that's the biggest difference is that there are audio directions, teacher led directions on the Google slides in the parent site. So I just want you to know that. Let's see. Um, I hope that helped. So love this. Will I be able to log into my students at home at home work? I would love to hear them read the stories. Yes. Yes. So once I actually should have showed you that. Oh, that's so silly. I should have showed you that. Let me actually show you that super quickly. So if I log out of guided readers, right? So remember, John was the child that I put in and I log in right now to guided readers on my side. Uh, hold on. Sorry, guys. Hold on. Let me log in really quick. Hold on one second. Okay, so now that, oh, now it's not working. You got to love that, right? Hold on one second. Here we go. <laughs> so if I go into my portal and I go into the student manager, remember when I showed you before that I was actually reading out loud? If you click this purple button right here, this allows you to hear your child reading. So once, once, so maybe you want to check your child's work for the day. Go back to your student, your your portal, your portal as the parent, and you could listen. Chuck could do anything. Remember, well, almost anything. That was me reading before, but your child will be in there, and you can listen to their reading. And also, if they take the quizzes, here's where you'll see their quiz scores right here, and you could download that as well. So you could see all of the work that your child is doing on Guided Readers. So I hope that helps. I wish I could call you by name, but um, it doesn't say your name. <laughs> so let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, okay, just joined, been following Guided Readers for a while, now I'm official, yay, and excited to get started, thank you. Now I have to invite kiddos. Oh good, I'm so excited that you started and you joined, I'm so excited, thank you so much. How many books do you get a month with parents at, for Guided Readers? So Love for All, with the, with the parent site, we actually give you access to the whole library. It's not a credit system like the teachers have. So again, the teacher site and the parent site are very different in, in the way we address how we went about it. You know, the way teachers teach reading, are it's very different than a way a parent would teach reading. So we wanted to make sure that we kept the teacher site very teacher-centric. 
So teachers know how to teach reading. So we wanted to ensure that the levels are, or the teacher side was teacher centric and the parent plan was parent centric. So for the parent plan, they have access to all of the books on the shelf for their monthly plan. But again, it's different because there's parent guides on the parent side and there's teacher full blown lesson plans on the teacher side. And again, the guide, the Google slides on the parent side have the teacher led directions so the parent doesn't necessarily have to be involved with the teaching or the learning. We're taking care of that for the parents. So I hope that helps. Let's see. So someone said, are the books leveled by DRA or Lexile? So all of our books are professionally leveled by Fontes and Pinnell and Lexile. So we provide both leveling systems within guided readers. So if your school is a Lexile school and you know your child's Lexile level, you can pick that when you do when you set up your child. If your school is a Fontes and Pinnell school, you can use Fontes and Pinnell. If you have absolutely no idea what level your child is reading at, Go based on what I told you, where a typical kindergartner is A through D, a typical first grader is D through about H, I, a typical second grader is between an I and um, uh, an M by the end of the year, and a typical third grader is about an M, N through a Q. These are overall, overall kind of very uh, generic levels. It's typically where readers fall when they're in that particular grade. Of course, if you have a child in first grader, if you have a first grader that's an advanced reader, then give them the advanced, more advanced levels. You might not give them level G, H. They might be on J, K, L, M. You have to think about where your child is and maybe sit with them for a couple of books and listen to them read. If they're, if they're having difficulty reading a book to you on that level, it's too challenging for them, it might be too difficult. We wanna make sure that the children are reading books that are on their independent and instructional reading level. We don't want the books them for that they're reading on their frustration level. We want them to, remember, scaffolding. We want them to build up to those higher levels. So if we start high, they're gonna miss all of that skill work that will get them there. So if you start too high, they're gonna miss the skill work. So I would suggest starting on an independent level, a lower level, and have them work up to that level. Because that means all those skills that they're going to work on in those Google Slides will scaffold one on top of the other on top of the other, and they'll learn those skills. So I hope that helps. Hello, everybody. How are you? So I hope this was informative and this was helpful. And I wanted you to know that Guided Readers is here for you. I'm so excited to bring it to you today. You can check it out at um, parents.guidedreaders. So uh, it's parents.guidedreaders.com. You can even go to guidedreaders.com and there's a link there for the parents to sign up as well. So I'm really excited to bring this to you. I'm sweating. It's a little hot in my office. Uh, I'm really excited to bring this to you. And again, this was created by me and the teachers that I work with because we know what works. We know what's going to get your child where they need to be before they go back to school next year. I, I hate even saying those words because it freaks me out when I say it, but we need to be realistic about what's possibly going to happen this year. And mo I think it's like up to 24 states have already canceled school for the rest of the year already. I, I think it's 24, I could be wrong. But um, that's why Guided Readers is here for you. That's why we created it. We wanna make sure that your children continue to read every single solitary day because that, my friends, that is what's going to make them progress and keep building. So I do hope this was helpful for you today. Please think about my three tips and use them and think about them and try not to stress yourselves out at home because you've got way too much on your plates to be worrying about also teaching your child all of the different content areas. That's just not feasible. It's or 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 even possible in my mind, when you've got 9,000 other things to do as a parent. So I do hope Guided Readers can help you in the reading realm to ensure that your children continue to progress with reading. We've made it super affordable for parents to just do it for a few months to maybe to get through this learning, this learning period of at-home learning, or even continue it through the summer to ensure that they continue reading. And it's all there. You can be as involved as you want, 
or not involved at all. We've made it super easy for parents to jump in with their children and get them reading and focus on scaffolding those skills that they need to continue to progress to the next level, the next level, the next level. And that's the goal in reading, to continue to progress them until they're at the fluent level. That's the goal, my friends. So thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I appreciate it all. I love Guided Readers. Amazing. Thank you so much again, everybody. I hope that I answered your questions. Please look for me uh, at the, um, we have a private Facebook group called Teaching My Child to Read. Join us in there. It's a free Facebook group. I'm in there. Happy to answer any questions that you have and to support you with your at-home learning needs. And um I'm here for you. So if you have any questions about home at home learning or you're stressed out, reach out to us in the Facebook group. We're there to support you. And I do hope that everyone is well and safe and healthy and especially at home. And um, I thank you for taking the time to work with me today and stay with me today and learn about guided readers. I'm so excited about this. I hope you'll join us. And again, I'm here to support you. So join our Facebook group and Come on in. I'll help support you in your home learning needs and give you any advice, any and all, all advice I can give you. I'm here for you because I could only imagine what it's like, um, what it's like at home. So um, there's actually one question that just came in. Jennifer says, what is the difference between teacher bloom and parent bloom? So Jennifer, there's a big difference between a teacher plan and a parent plan. There's very big differences. The teacher plan is teacher centric. Those lesson plans are detailed lesson plans that the, the teachers will know how to um, how to teach and how to uh, work with their students. The parent plan is a simplistic parent guide for every book. And the Google Slides have the teacher led audio directions for the sight words, the making words, the text dependent questions, things like that. So there's a big difference between the teacher plan and the parent plan. If you're a parent and not a teacher, trust me, do the parent plan. You'll be much better off. You might go into the teacher plan and feel overwhelmed because you're not a teacher. So everything that we put in there will feel overwhelming to you. And we want to make sure that your children at home are doing what they need to do to continue to progress with your reading. So if you're a teacher and you can handle the teacher plan, great. If you're a parent, trust me, do the parent plan. Again, don't forget, all the Google slides that come with the parent plan have the teacher-led directions to lead your child through the lesson, through the slides. So that's there as well. There's no audio on the teacher Google slides because the teacher will be instructing them. That was typically how it was made. The teacher instructs on a one-to-one -one or an iPad or a Chromebook in the classroom. But the parent side has the parent guides that are much a uh, simpler kind of structured plan. And also all of the Google Slides have the teacher led directions to lead the child through the learning. So I hope that helps. So thank you so much everybody for coming on today. Please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. We're here for you. My email is Anna at guidedreaders.com. Anna at guidedreaders.com. Don't forget the calendar is also in there for you to help you organize what your child's going to do for the next few months at home again or you just jump right in and you have your child learning every single day with a new book. So I truly hope that helps. Thank you so, 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 so much for coming. I appreciate you listening. And um, again, join me in the Facebook group, Teaching My Child to Read. I'm there for you. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks again, everybody. I hope you are all well. Please, please, please stay safe, stay healthy. From my home to yours, let's all stay inside, get rid of this pandemic so we can get on with our lives in the best possible healthy way that we can. Mwah. Thank you for coming. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will talk to you soon and happy reading. Don't forget to check out parents.guidedreaders.com. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day. Bye for now.